Hello and welcome to this um, explanation of Marxist view of social class. So the Marxist view of social class um, has several key elements. Marxism is a structural um, conflict perspective. So it's a structural perspective. It emphasizes the forces, social forces, large-scale structures in influencing individual behavior and identity. Membership of social groups on a large scale like class, um, economic relationships of, of ownership and non ownership. So that's to do with large scale structures like the means of production on a large scale relationships to those, the class system. Um, it's a conflict perspective, it emphasizes competition between social groups, primarily the owners and non owners. Um, it can be described as an economic um, deterministic approach. Economic determinism saying that the economy and the nature of uh, relationships in the economy shape the nature of every other aspect of social, cultural and political life. So Marx argued uh, that there's a class system. He argued that over time there are these stages in history which led to the development of the class system. Primitive communism, feudalism, capitalism, and communism are the four main stages of history, according to Marx. So primitive communism was shared ownership um, between groups. Um, they would share all the different um, aspects of work and um, sexual relations, food, reproduction, um, socialization ownership of all of those aspects of life was, was shared according to Marx following that feudalism uh, you know, knights and peasants basically tribes uh, or groups um, fighting for power um, and then Capitalism, following the Industrial Revolution, we have the development of private ownership, um, where we have trade uh, between groups. And following that, we have the idea of um, impoverishment, pauperization, and revolution. So there's several stages that Marx saw as inevitable stages in the development of history and society. So he, he sees capitalism, the system of economic relationships based on private ownership, as fundamentally exploitative. So private ownership, where people either own or do not own property, wealth, was he, for him the main dimension of inequality. Um, he describes the economic relationships of ownership or non-ownership between owners and non-owners as unfair. Whereas functionalists see them as symmetrical with different roles and status and rewards, but both being important to each other, Marxists say it's, it's a non-symmetrical, asymmetrical relationship. Um, the rich benefit and the poor lose out in terms of status. Um, the class system, um, talking about the idea of ideology, people are kept in their place by the belief system of capitalism, um, what Althusser calls the ideological state apparatus, ideological state apparatus, the agencies of informal socialization like family, media, religion, um, have an impact on our beliefs, make us believe in meritocracy, believe in working hard, enjoying consumption, all of which benefits capitalism and the rich rather than the poor. Um, Althusser also refers to the repressive state apparatus, agencies of formal social control and socialization, police and military. They are repressive state apparatus, so they coerce and force conformity through direct physical um, force. 
Um, so ideology is like brainwashing, uh, maintains the status quo and the social order, the stable pattern of behaviour. And it hides the reality of exploitation from the people, from the masses. Um, so this um, is part of the legitimization of capitalism. The legitimization process is, is making something acceptable. So in this case, it's the legitimization of capitalism itself as a, a way of life and a way of um, interacting. Um, according to Marx, over time, there'll be this proletarianization process. So proletarianization, the proletariat are the poor, bourgeoisie are the rich. So proletarianization is a process where more people join the working class, more people become working class. Um, this proletarianization process leads to polarization. So it leads to a widening gap between the rich and poor, between the owners and the non-owners. Between those who, who own the means of production, which is the resources, technology and skills to build products, to make products, and those who are actually non-owners, who uh, have nothing to sell but their labour. And of course, according to this idea, you're not given a fair, um, you're not valued, you're not given the right value for your labour, and so uh, you're exploited and used unfairly. Um, according to Marx, polarisation, gap between rich and poor will increase and increase. Eventually the working class gets bigger and bigger, and so that there'll be this, this huge group of poor with this small elite group at the top, the rich, until eventually there'll be this, this change and this shift. So Marx thought that ideology and legitimization prevented us from realizing that we're exploited. And in a capitalist system, we have alienation. Alienation means the separation of, of man from his consciousness. So according to Marx, he was influenced by Hegel, Hegel argued that um, what makes us truly human is consciousness and that um, we've been alienated from our consciousness. And he was talking about God and, and about how we've kind of replaced um, a kind of acknowledgement of us, our own consciousness with this image of God, which alienates us from our true um, wisdom in, in humans. So Marx thought that um, humans are naturally benevolent, which means kind, uh, and wise, we've got wisdom as a result of consciousness, you know, we're able to make decisions. And, and in this sense, all humans are fundamentally equal because all humans have consciousness. And Marx thought consciousness means you can have wisdom and benevolence. So, whereas the functions think we're selfish and irrational um, and we have to learn morals, um, the Marxists say we're benevolent and wise. So, it's actually the system which creates selfishness, it's the capitalist system which creates greed, it's capitalism which makes us um, avaricious or have avarice, which is a sense of keeping things for ourselves. So over time, the, the poor and rich will get separated more and more, there'll be this polarisation process, until eventually, um, where before people had false class consciousness, where they were unaware of their shared misery and shared exploitation as one whole group and where they were unaware because they were divided from each other and alienated from their own consciousness by the nature of boring monotonous work um, the nature of you know selfishness and greed in the capitalist system and the culture the, the way in which they're divided from each other because of race and so on which keeps them in their place over time they'll realize that they're exploited as one class so Marx was very much an uh, economic determinist. He thought that the economic system, the infrastructure, shaped the superstructure, the nature of all aspects of social, cultural and political life. Religion, the media, family, the workplace, all of those aspects of life are part of the superstructure, which is like the aspects that you can see in society. But beneath and determining all of that, is the infrastructure, the relationship of owners to non-owners, and the 
the status of either ownership or non-ownership, and that determines the nature of every other aspect of behaviour. So in education, we're expected to be obedient, that serves the rich. In religion, we're encouraged to be passive and obedient, that serves the rich. In the family, we're encouraged to be passive and obedient, we're fed, we're given food, we're given shelter, so that we can go and be productive workers to benefit the profits of the rich. So you've got this idea of polarisation, false class consciousness, until eventually people reach shared class consciousness, where they become fully aware of their exploited position as a whole social group, and they're no longer divided, but they become united in their sense of the shared misery and wretchedness of their position as exploited working class. This then leads to a revolution after shared class consciousness. Um, so there have been a number of studies which support Marxism um, or, or trying to analyse whether shared class, class consciousness is, is likely to happen, uh, whether it's likely to be unlikely and so on. So Braverman, 1974, Harry Braverman, 1974, um, presented the concept of de-skilling. The de-skilling thesis argues that people's uh, work conditions are degraded so middle class clerks, middle class workers, um, the skills that they used in their, in their desk jobs were replaced by machinery. And accordingly, the value of their skills obviously decreases because their skills are no longer used. And so their market labour position and their income also falls. And so Braveman thought that these groups were falling down into the working class as part of the proletarianisation process, which would add to polarisation. Um, so the argument about machinery and automation, replacing human skills and labour, leading to the decline in people's social status and downward social mobility, you know, that's been part of this, this debate. Um, it is criticised by the new right, who argue that automation and machinery has improved people's um, status, it's created new business and new opportunities for everyone. For example, social media, ICT, computing technology has enabled new businesses and new jobs to be created, not destroyed. Um, the idea of um, the gap between rich and poor and class inequality is getting worse is supported by Westergaard and Ressler. Westergaard and Ressler argue that there's been a hardening, not a fragmentation, of class inequalities. So they disagree with the Weberian view of fragmentation, and they support the idea of a hardening of class inequalities. So they have actually become more rigid differences and a, and, a, and a wider gap between the rich and poor. The evidence for this is that over the 1980s, uh, the, relative, the wealth of the top earning um, and owning groups increased but those at the bottom saw no real increase in earnings. So that again, there's this argument that there's a hardening of class inequalities. This will lead to further um, polarisation of, or this is further polarisation between the rich and poor. So there's, there's several ideas there for Marxism. Um, looking at the changes to social class, that's where you have to have the debate between the views. So I've given some explanations of what his predictions were and what some theorists have found uh, to try to support Marxism. Um, some later theorists, like postmodernist theorists, have been influenced by Marxism as well, like Jameson, who argues that there's global inequality and global class exploitation with transnational corporations um, exploiting, with, with a great deal of ownership and economic power, exploiting a global labour market which puts workers in a more precarious e economic position than in the past, so actually class and capitalism class and capitalism is actually worsening due to globalisation in an increasingly interconnected world. So as a postmodernist uh, Marxist influence theorist, Jameson. If you have any questions, email daniel underscore butcher at hotmail.co.uk.